Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. Today we're going to dive in with Roxy Munro about her new book, Dive In, Swim with Sea Creatures at Their Actual Size. Hey, Roxy, welcome back to Storymakers. In your research for this book, you came across some interesting facts about some of these creatures beneath the sea. Can you give us an example of one or two of these interesting facts? Yes, as a matter of fact, our cover girl could be a cover boy. This rainbow parrotfish is able to change its sex and the brighter colored ones that are now boys used to be girls. But that's not uncommon. Several other fish do that sort of thing too. And of course, the French grunts are kind of fun. I think we uh, know that they grunt, they give a noise. We talked about the fact, I think, that a lot of fish can be noisy. Tell us about the noise. So they actually make noise and they're able to defend themselves with the noise. They will mob together. It's a behavior that birds do too when they all congregate. And that sound, when they start making it, scares the other fish away and they come out in a big group making this kind of staccato sound. Many fish have different mechanisms and different ways to protect themselves. Some have big teeth, some have tentacles, some have poison, and many fish camouflage themselves. He hides in waiting and he tries to stay the same color as his environment to kind of hide, and then another fish comes along and he'll just go whoop and take that fish. This fish does the same thing. He's almost hidden away. Octopus do that. They change their colors all the time to match their background. Another very cool fish is the spotted moray eels, which are very, they're like four feet long and kind of scary because they're always going, <sighs> but the thing is, they're just breathing. They're actually not threatening you. And another very cool fish is the spotted trunk fish. They swim very slowly, but they have kind of a slimy surface. And if you took a bite out of it, for instance, a shark, they would die. So these guys are kind of amusing looking, but they can be very, very scary. Another fish, which isn't really a fish, it's a mollusk, would be the reef squid. They can change colors. So they're giving one message on one side of their body to maybe their mate and on the other side to their friends saying, you know, keep away. Really? Oh my. Every fish has a foe. Are any fish safe from another fish? Some fish have what's called a symbiotic relationship with other fish. That means that you help me and I'll help you. And a good example in this book are the Nanasa grouper and the yellow-nosed gobies. So what happens is this big gigantic fish opens his mouth and these little fish come up and they clean his teeth and they take little bites and clean his flesh up. And what happens is he intuitively does not eat them because they're helping him and they are happy because they're getting dinner. Another example of that kind of fish is the spotted cleaner shrimp and they're called cleaner shrimp because they dine on the parasites and the flakes of loose skin on other fish. So fish have different relationships with each other. It's not all that, you know, they're just gonna eat, eat all their other fish up. You said this book takes place in the Caribbean. Did you actually go to the Caribbean to research this book? Thanks for asking that, Rocco. Actually, there's a map in the back of the book that shows all the different coral reefs in the world. They're all along the equator. They need warm water, and of course, that's where you'll find the warm water. So I have visited the Caribbean. I have visited Hawaii, where I actually went to school and lived for five years. It's beautiful, and that was my first experience in coral reefs. And then not long ago, I went all the way to the Marquesas Islands, which are the furthest islands from any landmass in the world. We started in Tahiti and went to the Marquesas Islands, which has beautiful coral reefs. So Roxy, how do you draw a fish? I think I'll show you how to draw the cover fish, which is the rainbow parrot fish. After doing the research and doing a lot of sketches, I put the pencil sketch down on a drawing table, on a light table, and do it in ink. So first I do it in ink, and it's kind of just the outline of the fish. 
Then after that, in this particular fish, I had to figure out how to do the scales. So I did an overlay of the scales to fit the fish shape and put it again on the light table with the drawing paper on top of it. And then you can see that in this sketch. And then the next thing was to do scales. And you can see where I'm starting to do the scales in real paint. The shadows have been put in to give it a sense of roundness. So you just see there are a few scales put on here. Here I've started to paint in the different colored scales and the patterns. And here the fish is almost finished except for the coral behind it. Roxy, after seeing that, you have me wanting to color. So let's color. On my website, I have a lot of pages that you can print out, coloring pages, and I printed out this queen trigger fish that I sent you. And I have these colored um, markers to work with. Well, you know what? I have some markers too. I'm all ready. Let's paint the queen trigger fish in. I colored my favorite part of this fish. So let me show you what I came up with. Oh, that looks beautiful, but look what my fish has. Oh, wow, that's darling. That was so much fun, and I just want to remind our viewers that the coloring sheets are on Roxy Monroe's website. So if you want to color a fish, a colorful fish, go to her website. And the book is Dive In, Swim with Sea Creatures in Their Actual Size. So Roxy, thank you so much for stopping by Kid Lit TV, and I'm sure we will see you soon. Thank you, it's been delightful. And remember, until next time, read a book in any format.